You check it on your phone. You lose it when you're busy. You kill it when you're bored. And inevitably, you run out of it. Time is the most familiar thing in our lives. It rules everything we do, from the moment our alarm goes off to the moment we fall asleep. But here is a question that sounds simple until you actually try to answer it. What exactly is time? Is it a physical thing, like a river flowing? Is it just a construct we invented to organize our days? Or is it an illusion created by our brains? The famous philosopher St. Augustine once said, If no one asks me, I know what it is. If I wish to explain it to him who asks, I do not know. Today on Simple Things Surprising Histories, we aren't just looking at the clock, we're looking behind it. From ancient sundials to Einstein's bending universe, let's discover the surprising history and science of time. For most of human history, time wasn't something you read on a watch, it was something you felt. It was the rhythm of the sun, the moon, and the seasons. If the sun was up, it was time to work. If it was down, it was time to sleep. But as civilizations grew, ish wasn't good enough. We needed accuracy. The ancient Egyptians were among the first to slice the day into pieces. They used giant obelisks to track the sun's shadow, dividing daylight into 12 parts. This is actually why our clocks have 12 hours today. It's a habit we picked up from the Egyptians thousands of years ago. But here is the surprising part. For centuries, an hour wasn't a fixed length. In the summer, when days were long, an hour was long. In the winter, an hour was short. Time was flexible. It wasn't until the invention of mechanical clocks in the 14th century, and later the railroad boom in the 1800s, that we forced time to be rigid. Trains needed to run on a schedule, so we couldn't have every town keeping its own local sun time. We had to invent standard time. Essentially, we took the natural flow of the universe and trapped it in a grid of numbers. But while we became masters of measuring time, we were wrong about what it actually was. For a long time, thanks to Isaac Newton, scientists believed time was absolute. They thought of the universe as having a giant master clock ticking in the background. One second on Earth was exactly the same as one second on Jupiter, or one second at the edge of the galaxy. It makes sense, right? But in the early 1900s, Einstein came along and broke that clock. Einstein discovered that time isn't fixed, it's relative. He showed us that time is woven together with space into a fabric called space-time, and this fabric can bend. Two things can warp time, gravity and speed. The faster you move, the slower time passes for you relative to someone standing still. The stronger the gravity you're standing near, the slower time moves. This isn't just sci-fi theory, it's a proven fact that affects you every day. Take the GPS on your phone. The satellites that guide your Google Maps are moving fast and are farther away from Earth's gravity than you are. Because of this, their internal clocks tick faster than the clocks on Earth by about 38 microseconds a day. That sounds tiny, but if engineers didn't program the satellites to correct for this time difference, your GPS accuracy would drift by kilometers every single day. You'd miss your turn because of relativity. So we know time can stretch and squash, but there is one thing time does that space doesn't do. It only moves in one direction. You can walk forward and backward, you can drive north and south, but you can only move forward through time. You can't unscramble an egg, you can't unspill your coffee. This is called the arrow of time. But why? The laws of physics usually work the same forwards and backwards, but the second law of thermodynamics introduces something called entropy. Simply put, entropy is a measure of disorder. The universe loves messiness. There are infinite ways for a cup to be broken, but only one way for it to be whole. Therefore, things naturally move from order to disorder. This transition from a fresh ordered egg to a messy scrambled one is what we perceive as the flow of time. The universe started in a highly ordered state, the Big Bang, and is slowly drifting toward a disordered state. We're just riding that wave of increasing chaos, and we call it the future. Finally, we have to look at the hardware that is processing all of this. 
your brain. Even if physics says time is a dimension, your experience of it is biological. Have you ever noticed that time flies when you're having fun, but drags when you're terrified? That's because your brain doesn't record reality like a video camera. It records memories. When you're in a scary situation, your brain goes into hyperdrive, recording more details per second. When you look back at that memory, because there's so much data, it feels like the moment lasted forever. Surprising, right? It also means you're never actually living in the present. It takes roughly 80 milliseconds for your brain to process the light hitting your eyes and the sound hitting your ears and sync them together. That means everything you think is happening now actually happened a split second ago. You're permanently living just a tiny bit in the past. So what is time? It's a measurement we invented to organize civilization. It's a physical dimension that bends with gravity. It's a heat map of the universe getting messier, and it's a biological illusion created by our neurons. It is simple and yet completely mind-bending. I'm curious if you could travel back in time to fix one mistake or forward to see the future, which would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this journey into the history of the clock and the cosmos, please hit that like button and subscribe to Simple Things Surprising Histories. We'll see you next time.